All right, so in this lesson, we're going to go ahead and continue basically off the last lesson of which we were talking about UVs. And we need to go ahead and also take a look and a more complex look at our hypershade window, which is all going to allow us to apply textures and shaders to our models. So let's just go ahead and open our hypershade here and we'll come up the window, rendering editors, our hypershade window. And as you can see here, let me go ahead and just maximize this so that we have a, a decent working view of the hypershade. Okay, now it should be known that inside of Maya by default, there's two different types of nodes in inside the hypershade. These are Maya software nodes, and then there's mental ray nodes. Now, the software nodes will render inside of mental ray. Um, mental ray is more of a production based render um, to create more um, high res images and better quality images whereas the Maya mental ray nodes will not render inside the Maya software system okay so if we first just take a look here at file this is going to allow us to import or export select the networks that we want to either reuse or bring in the Maya from you know say if you've downloaded it off the internet from somewhere okay your edit window here is basically going to allow you to delete shading networks or shading nodes um, deleting unused nodes so if you have a complex scene and you have like 300 shaders in your scene and some of those shaders aren't actually being used it's going to allow you just to, to delete the used that are being unused okay you can also if say you have duplicate shading networks you can delete the duplicates um, you can always delete by type here which would be um, whatever that's in your scene if you want to select by type you can always do that whether it be textures lights and, and whatnot but that'll also work in conjunction say with your outliner as well okay um, you can always select objects with materials select materials from an object so if you select an object and then basically just graph it it's still going to show up in your work area here um, converting file to texture this is more for sort of like baking textures out so if you've watched other tutorials that I've actually put up on CG Touch Plus you'll see where I tend to use the convert file to texture and bake a texture out to begin my texturing process rather than doing all my texture work inside of Photoshop and this sort of makes it easier because I don't have to basically be inside of Photoshop completely I can bake out a base texture and then just add the detail on the texture later on inside of Photoshop you convert um, can convert PSD textures to layer textures so this goes along with Photoshop you can always create PSD networks to go into Photoshop you can edit that PSD network update PSD networks um, creating assets is more for uh, let's say more advanced users so let's just go ahead and skip some of these here okay if we want to take it our view and this is basically whether you want to have it as a list object okay or if you want it as icons you can have the uh, the icons here extra large, which are fairly huge, as you can see here. By type, it'll basically, you know, alphabetically do it. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look here um, at these next buttons. So let's go ahead and just create a, a basic shader here and as you can see we have two windows here um, if we want to just maximize the top space here we can go ahead and do that or if you want to just maximize your work area you can simply just click that button and it's going to maximize your work area which is very helpful whenever creating textures or uh, plugging in a bunch of different nodes into your shaders okay or you can just go ahead and bring them both back um, this will actually clear your graph it'll rearrange your graph or it's going to graph the materials on the selected object okay so let's say we want to go ahead and add a color into this fong and let's just do a ramp here and we'll just middle mouse drag 
and you'll see that you get another pop-up window and we can do that as Keller okay so let's select it and you can see that it's going to show that entire network so let's pull one off screen here try to move back here so I can get those entire shading nodes into the window here and we'll just go ahead and move these over and we'll just say drag this one off okay and we'll move back down here and you can see where this is completely off the screen and to simply zoom in there I just selected the object and then hit F okay so let's go ahead and select this button here and you can see where it's going to graph it but it's not going to organize it so we would have to actually select this button or one of these uh, this middle button here which is also going to show the input connection of the shading group node and that third button's basically just going to cut it down to you know the most simple portion of the fong but it's still going to allow you to see the shading group okay and the graph is here is basically the same thing the window here is going to allow you to either see the attribute editor okay as you can see here and you can see all the attributes of the sh um, the shader which will allow you to go ahead and control things like your color your transparency your reflectivity translucency and stuff like that um, I'm not going to walk you through every with every single attribute here does for the shader um, but you really should understand exactly what these things do so all you really have to do is just you know basically take a look at them for yourself and they're they're pretty self-explanatory so if you just grab one and just move it you can see where it's going to change here on the the actual shader icon as you can see here so if we wanted to say change the specular color to like light blue you can see where it's going to update here on the other side okay so we'll just go ahead and close that um, your connection editor is <clears throat> more for things like let's say if we have two different shaders in here okay and I'll go ahead and just create a blend and I will reload the right you can see where we can have our fong in the left side and our blend in the right side and let's say we want to connect the color of the fong to the color of our blend okay you can see where the blend is now going to simply update with that color information so instead of making the connections inside of the hyper shade you can basically make that connections inside of the the connection editor um, th this is also very useful in terms of you know when you're rigging your characters because you'll need to make connections that are going to be somewhat difficult to make without it so you can see where this is going to be a very very powerful tool um, let's go ahead and take a look at this okay options and these are pretty much not something we need to take a look at and you can also get help with our uh, with your hypershade if you want to take a look at the my help button which is just F1 on your keyboard it's going to launch the the internet site for the my online documentation system it, which is really the main thing here um, so anytime that you you ever need help all you have to do is just simply hit F1 on your keyboard and it's going to launch you to that internet site um, the learning path is pretty much the same thing and that's basically all these um, what all these are for here okay um, let's take a look at these little tabs this is going to show you all the textures that are in your scene okay so if we create another ramp material here you can see where it's going to consistently just put those ramp materials under the textures your utilities are basically your place 2d texture nodes your place 3d texture nodes and stuff like that which are going to control the way that the texture is actually being projected onto that shader this will control all the lights in there that are in the scene all the cameras that are in the scene so since we have four views you can see that we have four cameras here this is going to be your shading groups so since we have four shaders basically in the scene here you can see where we have the initial shading groups your bake sets are basically for 
baked, the textures that you've baked out or are going to bake out. Projects is basically your project system, and the asset nodes are basically for shading um, shader information that you have on assets inside of your scene. Okay. Um, if we take a look here on the left, let me go ahead and just move this over here. You can see where we have a bunch of different shaders, and I mean, if I went through and, and sort of walked you through which each one of these are and what they do, it's going to take a long time. Um, but you can see where you can basically just organize these on the left hand side too or separate them from what you would need. So let's say you would need something like a an environment texture, you just would have to go ahead and click on it and you will see where you get the initial um, environment nodes that are inside of Maya or the surface nodes, okay, which are your basic shaders, your volum volumetrics are things for like particles and fluid effects. Displacement is basically like a displacement map. 2D textures, okay, are basically images. Your 3D textures um, are fairly the same thing. Lights obviously are in your, um, that you want to go ahead and bring into your scene, so you not only can just create them from here, but you can also create them here in the hyper shade. So if we clicked on one, you see what we get our ambient light shape, shape there. Okay, your utilities are things like your sampler info nodes, um, and clear coat projections or bump 3D nodes. Um, and these are fairly complex. I mean, I've been using Maya for, for a while, and even I don't understand exactly what each and every one does. Um, so don't go and, and be overwhelmed by this. Um, just take a look at them and and you'll try and understand what they mean. Okay, so let's go ahead and just move this back here. Your image planes, you can go ahead and bring in an image plane. But that just goes with the, the view image plane type thing here. And glow is basically going to be a, uh, a glowing source for your light. Okay. Uh, we can now just go ahead and close this. So now that we understand the hypershade, uh, we'll go ahead and call it an end for this lesson. And come on back and we'll continue learning. So, yeah, thanks for watching.